All right. Well, today we're going to be working on building some of my little micro boost boards. This is a neat little board. It takes anywhere from 0 0.8 volts DC in on this side and outputs 5.0 volts DC on the right side. Over on the left, there's a uh, little header connector for a uh, little LiPo battery. And on the right, typically uh, these are provided uh, without the header pins. I just got these on here for testing. So you can either side of this into your circuit or, or whatever works for you. And also on the left, also typically unpopulated, there are two more header uh, pinholes on the left if you wanted to uh, maybe solder uh, some uh, double A's in a battery pack or what have you. Definitely a neat little board. Now as far as assembling these, I'm going to use some solder paste. I like this uh, chip quick stuff. Now when I do larger assembly runs, I usually have a stencil and all that other fun stuff, but these boards are still pretty new, so I, I usually do a smaller run. So I will be applying the paste manually. This is their lead-free paste, the SMD 291SNL10. Definitely one of my favorites. Actually, it works really good. I was concerned initially about switching over to the lead free, but I'll tell you, I hardly notice a difference. Now, along with that, they include this little uh, syringe tip here. I'm not a big fan of these. You know, they work okay, uh, but you really don't get that great of a control over uh, how the paste is uh, applied. So I keep that one in the bag. What I use instead these little uh, conical tips they have a, a much shorter uh, tip in the end and the overall shape actually uh, helps make it a little bit easier for the paste uh, to flow skipping my blue gloves for the uh, benefit of the video today otherwise I normally would be wearing those um, oh right those conical tips that I use I use these Weller ones Looks like these are 22 gauge uh, taper tip. They come uh, 25 to a package and they last a really long time. Um, I probably go through them, I don't know, maybe a new one every five or six uh, panel builds, so they'll last me quite a while. I just keep it in the bag with the paste and everything goes into the fridge. Alright, so we got that. We're only going to do four of these today, so nothing too crazy. Pretty simple circuit. Nice and easy board to uh, put together. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. Hopefully the camera angle works out well. Really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to start with these longer pads up top. And hopefully you can see that. I'll just apply a little bit of paste to each of these. The most important thing when it comes to solder paste, in my opinion, is less is more. You really don't want to use a huge amount. On these I'm using a little bit extra because I know these are going to be some pretty big pins that is uh, being connected. But when it comes to the pads for like a uh, capacitor or resistor, you really don't need a ton. That'll especially hold true for the finer pitch stuff. If you put too much on, you end up getting uh, bridging and all sorts of other not so fun stuff. And of course you don't want too, less, too little either, otherwise you might not end up soldering anything. Alright, now we're going to put the paste on the little uh, SOT 23.5 different people have different techniques fortunately the tip on here is uh, small enough that's really blurry there we go that I can really get in there and get each of the individual pads pretty well as long as you're careful that's what I do I 
All right. As you can see, that goes pretty quick. I usually do a quick visual inspection after I'm done to make sure I didn't miss any uh, pads. Usually doesn't fail if I forget to look. By the time I get the paste put away and I have most of the parts uh, put on the board, I notice that I forgot one or two. All right, let's do this other one real quick here. Definitely like to keep the boards uh, together whenever I can. It's much easier to work with a, a cluster of these than to try to hold a, a really tiny board all by itself. Oop. I almost forgot those. A little more on that one. Alright, that is looking pretty good. Alright, go ahead and put this away. And for me, I usually keep it in a kind of a, a double ziplock uh, configuration, just to make sure that icky stuff doesn't get anywhere. All right. Now I'm going to move these over uh, off to the side for a moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my uh, work surface for uh, placing the parts. Today, I'm going to be using my uh, vacuum pick and place tool. I actually uh, put two of these together earlier with the plain old tweezers. But uh, I'll tell you, the vacuum pickup makes a big difference. So we'll be using that. All right. I actually saw this technique uh, on YouTube. I forget who I was watching there. It might have been uh, Mike's Hardware. And uh, what he does is he takes a, uh, well, I guess a piece of wood or, or whatever you might have. And on that wood, I don't know if you could see it too easily. There you go. There's a couple strips of double sided tape. And what ends up happening is you can take your cut tape and press it right down onto the double sided tape and it holds it really really well. It's actually stuck pretty good. Uh, the only thing you don't want to do is press too hard because you can end up uh, you know, either damaging parts maybe or um, sometimes there's holes in the bottom of the cut tape or pretty much always. If you push too hard you can end up sticking the parts down there too and then they're real hard to get out of there so just enough pressure to get them to stick. I'm going to do that with all the components that I have for this particular board because Not a ton of components, and they're easy to tell apart. Another little uh, time-saving tip. One thing that I learned after designing all these different boards and, and doing pretty much all of the uh, assembly myself. Component placement on the boards can make a pretty big difference. You know, when I'm laying out uh, where, say, capacitors and resistors are going, you know, I keep in mind the orientation that they're facing, because every time you, you change and you uh, basically are setting yourself up to need to either rotate uh, the board or the parts bin if you're using vacuum pickup. 
Otherwise, you're going to be having to move around a whole lot to try to grab those parts. So it ends up being a lot quicker if everything's kind of facing the same way. At least for that type of part. And we'll grab these little connectors here. Probably put those on last. Okay. I'm going to move this. Move the camera a little bit. Here is the pickup tool that I have. It's got kind of a base here. This is a, a Virtual Industries uh, SMD VAC. This is an older model. I actually picked it up on eBay. Figured it'd be a better deal than buying a new one, but excellent, excellent tool. This has saved a tremendous amount of uh, time for me. Picking the smallest of the vacuum tips here. And there it is. It's got a tiny little uh, rubber nozzle on the end, which helps with picking up the parts. This particular tool has a, uh, a vacuum release. Surprisingly, uh, there's, there's enough tack to the solder paste that a lot of times I don't even use that. When I end up pressing this down to the board, the part just stays in place. So, all right. Next, I'm going to remove tops of the cut tape for the components that I'm about to use. If I got a lot of different components, I sometimes will only uh, remove the, the top for the ones that I'm just about to place. Otherwise, you can almost guarantee they're going to go all over the place, especially if you accidentally hit your uh, work table. Not that I'd ever do that by accident. Now I gotta say, one of my gripes when buying smaller quantities of uh, cut tape components is when you get a couple of bags with a single piece. They're a little challenging to open sometimes. Off to the side here and my boards where is my camera let's see there we go turn on the vacuum uh, tool here and placing components I usually go from uh, smallest to largest but today this board not too picky Place these caps first. Actually, I'll get this other board over here too. And you can see I'm not even using that uh, vacuum release button. Everything's staying in place. Uh, let's see if we can get these inductors on there. Now you can see this is facing in a different direction, so now I gotta rotate the boards. boost regulator. Those are facing this way. I'm going to turn this though. I think this is going to be a little bit easier to work with in this direction. And these might require the uh, release button.
I might also go back later and tweak these a little bit with the tweezers. All right, so for the larger uh, connectors, I'm actually going to switch. And I'm going to use, let's see what looks good. Maybe this tip here. This one's got a slightly larger little rubber uh, tip on it. And these are facing that way. Nope. Go this way with them. Just a quick check to make sure those regulators are in a decent uh, spot. The surface tension of the paste will actually pull these parts a good deal to the center of the pads, um, but it doesn't hurt to get it uh, in the general vicinity. Now we just pull the uh, empty cut tape off here, and you can see it's stuck down pretty good. All right, there we go. Now, let's go over to reflow oven. All right, we'll catch you over there. All right, and the reflow oven. Here. I like to use this aluminum uh, tray. It really helps uh, even out the heat a little bit. And it's very important to get the boards nice and in the center of the oven and really not directly below any heating elements. Otherwise, you could run the risk of scorching them. All right. Now I do all my heat control manually. First thing I do is typically set it to a lower temperature, uh, suitable to dry out the paste, usually around 100, 150 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take. Again, kind of eyeballing it. And we're gonna let this run. Once that uh, uh, really inside clicks off. I know it's up to temp. I'll let it sit there for a couple of seconds and I'm going to ramp it up uh, to the peak temp and basically wait for it to reflow. And it'll probably take about five or six minutes so I will skip that on the recording. Alright, reflow has completed. I've gone ahead and uh, pull the door open just a little bit to start the cooling phase but skipping ahead a little bit. This is what we'll end up with. Not too bad. All right, cool. Well, we should have these in our store uh, available pretty soon, and we will catch you later. Thanks for watching.